Hello, my truth seekers. My name is Keisha. Guess what I discovered? I discovered that Jennifer Lopez was and possibly still is paid more per film than Viola Davis and Taraji P. Henson and Regina King, Martin Lawrence and Angela Bassett. And if I look further, I will probably find a lot more. The question is how? How in the hell did that happen? Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning in this video I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. I mean, I literally bumped into this revelation some time ago and I was appalled. Before the glitz and glamour, J-Lo was a dancer, a fly girl on In Living Color, but she had bigger dreams. She hustled, auditioned, and eventually landed her breakout role in Selena, one of my favorite movies. You see, J-Lo music career skyrocketed. Hits like Jenny from the Block and On the Floor dominated the charts. I mean, they are still one of my two favorite songs that she made. And let's not forget her acting career. I mean, the girl is becoming a box office queen from the wedding planner that I still watch right to this day and the hustlers that I watched maybe once or twice, but it was still good. She should have got some kind of award for that. But here's the real secret. JLo is a savvy businesswoman. Oh yes. She launched fragrances, clothing lines, which I love by the way, and I love her fragrances. I mean, seriously, she got style artistic creativity and just great taste and makeup collections which i have not looked into but i will her empire is literally worth billions oh yes now through marriages divorces and high profile romances j-lo remains resilient her legacy breaking barriers for latino artists and inspiring generations oh yes so next time you hear Jenny from the block, remember that behind the bling lies a fierce entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, maybe this would explain why Jennifer Lopez started making $10 million per movie after her successful title role in the 1997 biopic, Selena, oh yes, where she portrayed the late singer who was murdered. Now, this role not only launched her acting career, but also made her the first Latin artist to earn over one million per film. Oh, yes. And that was back then. Now, from there, she made, well, from now, she made about 20 million plus per movie now. Largely because the late Selena Quintanilla and Myers followed her and considered her as a replacement for the deceased Selena. Oh, yeah, so she garnered a lot of fans just for portraying Selena. Well, they used to anyway. But how did she get the opportunity to rise so fast and become an entrepreneur? It was like everything she touched turned to gold, hell, platinum, diamond. Why? I mean, were we put under some spell? I mean, yes, I was, and I, I'm still, I'm a little bit, just not as dedicated as a true Jennifer Lopez fan as I was after the Selena Quintanilla movie. Oh my goodness, I just thought of something. Did you know you can take another person's destiny despite them being alive or dead, for example? And I'm reading this from this website titled Embrace Spirituality, and I will leave the link below. Now, Barbara, this is an example here, okay? But, you know, but just take some truth facts from this, okay? Barbara has a wedding gown. She has been married for 10 years. Nancy, her sister, is now engaged to be married. And so Barbara decides to lend Nancy her wedding gown. Barbara's marriage is okay. It is loving, but there are small problems as usual within their new family. Or perhaps in the back of Barbara's mind, she made a mistake getting married. However, because of her religion or culture, she must remain married. Yet the feeling of unfulfillment persists. 
but now she hands her wedding gown which represents her marriage and all that she is to she handed to nancy nancy now marries the love of her life wearing the dear sister's wedding gown however a year into nancy marriage nancy and her husband separated and are heading towards divorce all of this came through the energy transference of this one wedding gown passing along the unfulfillment of Barbara's life, which she has kept hidden inside of her. How? Well, Barbara, regardless of the fact that she has not shared how she feels with anyone, the wedding gown that she wore that changed her life from a single woman to a married woman now represents the base of her unhappiness. And now she has passed it along to Nancy, who would have had a bright future with her husband, but now she carries Barbara's load. And so now their destinies have been shared. So imagine this scenario with Jennifer Lopez, who was rumored to have wore some of Selena's clothes and even slept in her bed on the bus, among many others. Because those things were so dear to Selena. Her destiny, while rearing and experiencing these things, transferred to Jennifer Lopez. I mean, think about it. As soon as the movie was done, Jennifer Lopez's life resembled Selena. Seriously. For example, Selena was married to a member of the band or someone involved in music before she died. Jennifer Lopez wasn't married to a member of the band, but shortly after the movie was over, she became involved with Sean Combs and later married a member of the crew, which was Chris Judd. Now, according to what I was told, Selena had a clothing line and was in the process of releasing her own perfume line. One of the things I found out when researching Selena facts is that she was working on a perfume. Selena family decided to release three fragrances from the three perfume samples she had picked out before her passing, named after her songs, Amor Pejibro, Bidi Bidi Bamba, and Come on the Floor. Yeah. Now, Jennifer Lopez had a clothing line and perfume line shortly after her movie in Selena. Now, Jennifer Lopez may have literally stolen Selena's destiny and essence. Some members of Hollywood like to do this before any project to elevate their star status or in the middle of some kind of tour or movie or whatever. But it doesn't last long, maybe about 10 years, if that. So if Jennifer Lopez stole Selena's essence back in 1996, 1997, it would have ended somewhere in 2007. That spell should have broken off by that time and her career should have started to die off or become rocky. That's unless she performs another transference. Now, this ritual could have been with what her deal may have been with the devil was back in 1997, 1996. It could have been done the same way. The ritual could have been done the exact same way. Now, I know she started dating Mark Anthony around this time in 2007, but that ended in divorce and her career has been hit and miss ever since. Let's face it, the essence that she stole from the late great Selena Quintanilla has subsided. Now she's running her on her legacy and name. There is no extra hoof from a, a deceased icon, but Nora Jennifer, she'll have something up her sleeve. Take a look at these clips. Do you know what a destiny killer is? Things that can steal your destiny away from you, your God-given purpose. Um, it will look like stagnation, delay, laziness, um, Poor health is a huge destiny stealer, right? Um, have you ever just like, what happened? Someone's here and then they're gone tomorrow. It's like a ticking, you know, explosion, time explosion. Um, but destiny killers are a real thing. This is something that God has been asking me to look more into, even when it comes to my generational line, right? What happened in the past with parents and grandparents and other family members and how that is reflective on the things that um, I need to do when it comes to my business, when it comes to my purpose. So I'm going to start a series on um, these destiny stealers because I think it's so important, especially for those of us who have always felt like um, my life should be more. It should be bigger. I should be doing this. You know, you've always had that really big dream, um, but maybe we've used the excuse of like, this is my circumstance, or I don't have enough time or, right? That, that's how the enemy will um, present it to us so that um, we think it's just life. When in fact, right, um, the enemy has 
put some things in places and put some mindsets in places so that we believe um, that this is just how it is. But in this season, especially going into 2024, I want us to get bold about our destiny. I want us to get bold about the purpose that God has given us. So I'm going to do my best to prepare us um, and help us with the mindset uh, of operating and being and doing what God has purposed for us to do. There are two ways that your destiny can be stolen and both of these ways are actually interconnected. One of the first ways that your destiny can be stolen is through a destiny swap spell and this is actual spell work that is performed to swap the energies of two people so that the person who has a high destiny or a high calling will now take the lower or more negative karmic destiny of someone else. A destiny swap is usually done over time, like it can take years because essentially it's a bit by bit process where you begin to take on more and more of the other person's negative energy and they take on more and more of your positive energy. So the person may begin to notice a change in their look where they were usually very fortunate and victorious. Now they're experiencing a lot of misfortune, a lot of loss. And anytime they get good things, they don't keep them for very long. Now let's get into the real tea because the power of a destiny swap spell only lies in painting or casting an illusion over your life. So the spell work will cause a lot of misfortune in your life to give you the illusion that you are misfortunate, to give you the illusion that you do not have a high destiny or calling. So the moment that you begin to accept the misfortune and say, I'm just unlucky, I'm not meant to be anything special, then the illusion goes from fiction to fact. The second way that a destiny swap spell can occur is through principalities as i always say a person does not have to hex you high ranking dark spirits can cause trouble in your life and in your lineage the bible talks about principalities as the rulers of wickedness and darkness and these are high ranking dark spirits that essentially causes havoc and misfortune in the earthly realm to prevent people from achieving their destinies and to prevent people from getting closer to God. And I mentioned that these two ways are interconnected because a lot of wicked people who are doing wicked things on this planet like destiny swaps are actually being controlled and possessed by principalities. So when we are operating in a low vibrational state, we are opening ourselves to being influenced by principalities. When we are envious, when we are gossipers, when we are gluttonous, when we have certain addictions and habits, we are actually opening our vessel up to negative dark influences that determine how we think and how we treat other people. And as mystical as this whole destiny swap thing may sound, it's actually a lot more common than you think. There are millions of people on this planet right now who are meant to be great, great people, but they have yet to achieve their full potential because the whole function and purpose of principalities is to prevent people from achieving the godly state here on earth. You may be asking me, Oshun Kimi, how do you know all of this? And I know all of this for one, because the Holy Spirit has revealed the ways to me that this has been the situation in my own life, where ever since I was a little girl, there were so many negative forces working against me to prevent me from coming into full realization of my spiritual gifts. I would get constant nightmares. I would see things. I would feel things watching me and following me. And so for the longest, I just wanted to ignore my spiritual gifts because I was too afraid. And that is exactly what they wanted. They wanted me to be afraid. If your story is similar to this, if you know that you are meant to be a great being, if you know that you came here to leave a strong, significant mark on this world, but you feel that along the way you got lost from that purpose and that mission, then it's time to begin reclaiming your destiny, tap into your intuition, tap into meditation and begin asking God again, God, what am I here for? God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to see? and begin reclaiming yourself and your destiny according to what God reveals. Here's five type of dreams that you will have 
if somebody is working witchcraft on you and trying to hold down your destiny and stopping you from possessing your higher being number one seeing yourself in a classroom whenever you're dreaming about yourself in like your classroom from when you was a child or something like from from let's say fifth grade fourth grade or like even junior high school or whatever that means that somebody's trying to stop your progress. They don't want to see you succeed. They want you to be stagnant and stay in the same place over and over again. So it's like you're constantly just having this dream or you have this dream a few times and you're wondering like, why are you having this dream about this? It's because somebody is trying to stop you from literally getting to the place that you need to be in life. And sometimes you dream about these things each year is because the person is going and renewing what they're doing. You know, because these things has to be renewed all the time. So my advice to you is literally find a pastor, find somebody that can help you literally pray and fast and try to really destroy everything of the enemy because the enemy always come to kill, steal, and destroy. Number two, when in you, when you're dreaming about things constantly getting taken from you, like when you're in your dream and then like somebody's stealing something from you, that means the enemy is taking from you. You know, it's trying to take your destiny. It's trying to take every blessing that God has placed upon your life. So make sure to always pray against those things. When you when you have a dream like that, wake up in the morning and pray against it to be like, no, this is not going to be my life. And I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Number three is when you're eating in a dream. You ever have a dream where you're like, people is feeding you food, especially like meat, things that you don't even know what this is. Is either they're trying to initiate you or they're trying to get you sick to kill you physically because when you do stuff spiritually it manifests physically so that's one of the reason as well number four is when you dream about like rats and roaches if you ever come across rats and roaches in your dream they're trying to basically attack you financially because roaches are spirit of poverty and rats are spirit of poverty and you don't need to be dreaming about none of those things. And the fifth one is when you dream about you being attacked by animals, specific animals, like let's say cats, dogs, wolves, spiders, snakes. No, you're not supposed to be dreaming about those type of things attacking you. That just means they're trying to steal your glory and they're trying to, to steal your destiny. They're just trying to overall destroy your life. So pray against those things and bind and cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remember, Jesus is Lord and you should always have faith and trust in God because he will redeem us. Are you sure that the life that you are currently living is yours? Because worldwide, there are innumerable amounts of people who have had their destiny stolen by witches and warlocks who went and did a destiny swapping spell. Destiny swap spells are used to steal and take the destiny, the good things and blessings from one person and transfer it to another. God has given everyone a different destiny and many of you can feel that you aren't living the life God has for you. You can feel something has been stolen, it's been taken from you. You know the life you are living isn't yours. It's as if you know you should be playing on the court, yet you are sitting there in the stands just watching and gazing at your own life, right? 1 Corinthians 15.41 states that there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for stars differ from star in glory just as the celestial bodies differ in their glory so do we each and every one of us has a different type of glory that the lord has bestowed upon us a different destiny amen ecclesiastes 10 7 states that i have seen slaves on horses and princes walking on the ground that's backwards something is wrong this is destiny swapping destiny stealing there are two types of thieves. One will look into your house window to see if there's anything worth stealing. If there is, then they'll break into your home and take, right? But the other kind will use divination and spiritual means to look at you in the spirit, to peer into your life, to see how bright is this person's star? What do they have good coming into their life? And they'll use a destiny swap spell to steal from you. It's the same mentality. A thief is a thief, but two different methods. 
Here's how it works. When they look at you in the spirit, they'll be able to see, okay, this person has lots of finances and money coming into their life. Now, they're not physically reaching into your life and pulling out a box of money from your life. It is a spiritual process. A financial blessing leads to ideas. Those ideas, through the blessing as well, are able to be carried out in that person's life. When they can carry out the idea, that leads to the tangible finances that you see here on earth. It's the blessing that they take. Genesis 27, Jacob steals Esau's blessing. He stole it through trickery and it stood. Jacob stood on those blessings and kept them. Remember that. So what they'll do is you'll have a blessing to make money. They'll take that blessing from you, stolen blessing. So if a person's destiny is swapped, that financial blessing they had on their life is gone. But it doesn't mean that they won't get the ideas anymore. However, the blessing or the anointing to actually carry them out is gone. They won't have that anymore. The ideas will come, but they can't do anything with it. I know someone whose destiny was stolen. She would come up with good business ideas and then you see them later on popping up on television or they'll pop up in a headline. Very unique, unique niche ideas that pop up and make lots of money, but she never had the ability to carry them out. God forbid. To avoid this, cast a protective spell and a binding spell to stop anyone from doing this to you again. However, you may be in luck because the Aquarian Age will dispel these evil spirits and spells and deceptions. This is the age of the truth, remember? Oh, and thank you to a determined truth seeker for bringing this to my attention. I mean, the possibility that someone may have stolen my destiny didn't even dawn to me until she brought it to my attention. Thank you, my guardian angel. Remember that the person could be a stranger or relative or friend. Oh yes, please stay alarmed and stay safe. Now, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share, and hit that bell so you can get notifications when I post more videos. See y'all later, love you all, bye. Oh, and again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.